Hi, and welcome to the Zen of Reffing Roller Derby Lesson 2, Whistles. I'm Axel Sestival, the author of this training manual. I'm filming this on May 9th, 2018. The content of this presentation is up to date as of this recording. Should this video become obsolete or replaced by a newer version, I'll place a link on the screen to where you can find more information. As always, you can find the latest version of the full Zen of Reffing Roller Derby training manual at www.tinyearl.com dot com slash zen refing. A quick disclaimer before I begin, the WFTDA, the MRDA, and the JRDA are not responsible for the content in the, either the training manual or this presentation, nor do they make any claims as to the accuracy of its content. Alright, now let's talk about whistles. There are two types of whistles that you'll use in roller derby. The first come on a lanyard, lanyard being the strap that goes around the neck. This particular type of lanyard is called a safety lanyard. Safety because it can pull right off. If something should happen during a game and something should get wrapped in there, it'll pop off like that with just a light tug. The second type of whistle you'll use is a finger whistle. They call it this because your fingers slip in it like that. It'll fit two fingers in there. It's adjustable so you can make it fit all sorts of, you know, uh, like larger, smaller fingers like that. And it works pretty well. Whistles can come either with a cushioned mouth guard or without. I don't know how well you can see this on the camera. I'm going to try to slide this in there. And you might notice there's a little plastic, like a kind of a white clear plastic strip on there. Hopefully that came out. It's basically uh, a little like set of like a soft plastic over there. And it basically gives you something you can kind of kind of bite into like that, as opposed to just the hard plastic, you know, of the actual whistle itself over there. I'm, I believe cushion mouth guards are supposed to be for like other sports when like you, you risk like a ball hitting you in the mouth or something when the whistle's in there. It can like cushion the blow to your teeth. I find it simply find it more comfortable to hold on to, and it's a little easy for your teeth to grip, which is useful in roller derby, as oftentimes, particularly with a whistle with a lanyard, you'll be, spend, you'll be spending a lot of time during the game actually reffing with the whistle just sitting in your mouth. So without the cushion mouth guard, it you know kind of tends to you know come loose a little bit like that, or it's harder to grip with your teeth. The whistle type that you want to use is called the Fox 40 Classic. It's a P-less whistle, meaning there's no little like metal P inside it that kind of rattles around as you blow. Um, the the uh, sometimes you'll see it referred to as the CMG, basically, or a model that's not a CMG. CMG again is for cushioned mouth guard, like that, and either is fine uh, for the game. The Fox 40 Classic is the standard in roller derby. It has a specific tone. Uh, that that uh, skaters are very good at responding, well, they're trained to respond to, and officials will hear it much better as well. Fox makes several other whistles that involve the same tone. They have the classic mini. It's just simply the classic, but it's slightly smaller, the same tone, but it's six decibels quieter. It should be fine for your roller derby needs unless you're playing in a venue which gets really loud. There's also the Fox Eclipse. It is the same sound and the same volume as a classic, but it's got a sleeker design to it. Fox 40 makes quite a few other whistles, such as the Pearl, the Sonic, etc. These are non-standard whistles over there. While yes, you can use them for a game of roller derby, they're not recommended. If for no other reason, then you'll have multiple referees in the jam timer using one whistle and another one using something with a different tone, and it's just going to sound funny. And as I said, skaters are trained to respond to, specific, to the specific tone of the Fox 40 Classic, since that's all they've, virtually all they're having in their uh, scrimmages and their games and such. So as soon as you start using non-standard whistles, um, it's going to like puzzle them. It's going to kind of confuse them a little bit. And it just sounds very discordant to listen to. That being said, some of the other whistles do have their advantages. Uh, for example, they might be a lower tone, which means they carry better over a longer distances, or they might have a, hi a higher maximum number of decibels. So if you were going to play in a stadium with, you know, 3,000 people in the audience all cheering and it was going to be really loud, the crew might do really well to specifically adapt to a different whistle or something that's going to carry louder. But for 99.99% .99 of your roller derby needs, the Fox 40 Classic is going to be the way to go. Now let's talk about the specific signals with, uh, with your whistle. One short blast refers to the start of a jam. For example, two short rapid blasts, and I want to mention the difference between short and rapid over here. We have whistles that take longer, we have whistles that go shorter. Rapid refers to the frequency between, or, or the speed of which two, multiple, two or more multiple blasts occurs. 
Historically, in roller derby, people have interchanged the words short and rapid, and that was confusing English as a second language users. So let's try to like watch the language in this. But two short rapid blasts indicates the call for a lead jammer, like this. One long blast means penalty, and that sounds like this. Four rapid short blasts, just one set of them, so it's only four whistles, refers to the beginning of a timeout, like the team timeout or official timeout or official review, some sort of clock stoppage like that. Uh, traditionally, this occurs between jams as if it occurs, well, it occurs between jams like that. And that will sound like this. If you hear three sets of that, uh, of those four whistles over there, that refers to the end of a jam. And the reason that it's traditionally between jams, you know, when the one set occurs, is because the skaters are playing during a jam, so if you were only to do one set to try to stop the clock, then everybody's like, wait a second, well, why weren't there two more sets? Is the jam ended? Is it not? It, just, it confuses everybody like that. So three sets will sound like this. And you can continue with additional sets until the skaters cease playing if necessary. Finally, there's what they call the rolling whistle. That signals the end of a timeout or the end of a period. And that sounds like this. A few other little tips on whistles. First, whistles are not used when you issue penalties as skaters are lining up for a jam, because the penalty, you know, of one long whistle sounds an awful lot like the jam start whistle of one short whistle. So if skaters hear the sound of the Fox 40 Classic, they're just going to jump and start playing like that when they're lining up for the jam. It's fine to use your whistle if you want to issue a penalty that's like, you know, two seconds after jam ends, because again, everybody's still in kind of like a jam mindset, and they're not going to be confusing that with the start, you know, with a jam start signal. That's fine. But if, if people are lining up, don't, don't do a whistle then with it. Just issue the penalty without the whistle. Next, whistles are not used with warnings. We'll come back in a later lesson to talk about what specifically warnings we give and what warnings do. That'll be a later lesson. But don't use a whistle with that because again it's not a penalty and you're going to confuse skaters if you if you uh, issue a whistle or if I'm sorry if you use a whistle next when your a jam is in play it will continue to the fourth tweet of the first set of jam call off whistles so like when you see me point that would be approximately when the jam would actually be stopped there might be continued like movement and such after the fact but the jam itself has ended so list like this When I gestured with my finger, hopefully I'm going to be able to cue that up to be exactly when uh, the jam end, uh, the jam would have ended, like that. Another tip: when calling off a jam, other referees should attempt to exactly match the timing of the tweets. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with something that sounds awful. It might sound something like this. Uh, it's just a mess like that, uh, and it just makes the crew look bad. So don't do it. A couple other tips for you. If you have pockets in your game uniform, and, and again, not all referees do, carry an extra whistle or two in case an official's whistle breaks during the game. I was in one scrimmage I was doing, the jammer referee skates past me, looks at me and goes, I lost my whistle! And boom, instantly I pull it off around my neck and I'm able to hand him, you know, a substitute whistle. And now, you know, I just simply use my finger whistle for the rest of the jam. You're not always going to be able to do that uh, in, in, you know, in a game like that. There are some referees that like to only carry one whistle. Great if it works, not so great, you know, if it breaks or falls off or something like that. Um, so it's a really good idea to have like a spare whistle like that. Again, carry one on your finger, one around your neck, just in case. Uh, I, as a head referee, I will always carry a spare whistle of each type in my pocket for just this reason. I want to be able to hand it to somebody uh, during a jam, or if I need to, I can hand it to them between jams. I don't want to have people, uh, like a timeout, where someone has to go run to the locker room and retrieve extra whistles. That's an unnecessary game stoppage. So I carry the extra whistles just in case. And finally, a little note on color. It's tradition in roller derby. It's just individual preference, what color you use. A lot of referees use black just simply because it's the it's the most common, but you can find uh, the Fox, you know, 40 whistles in a wide variety of colors, some of which are like really bright and vibrant. It's really up to you what you want to use. But I did know a jammer referee once uh, who had a wide uh, assortment of colors in uh, her personal collection, 
and she would always match the whistle she was using to the color of the team that she was covering when she was jammer referee. So if she ever became confused during a jam as to which team she was covering, you know, she she'd have you know the whistle. She could just kind of instantly glance down, have an extra little cue right in her line of sight over there, just to kind of sort her out. And as you'll find later, as you start <laughs> jam refing and roller derby, it's very easy to become confused, particularly at the beginning of the second half of the game, which team you're 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 on. So that's just an extra little indication. That ends this lesson. It was the shortest one that you're going to have. They all get a little bigger from here on. Next time, we're going to discuss verbal cues and hand signals. Thank you.